This is a Studio 6 live session with Graftition. Take it away. Tell me again the story that bites your lips and leaves your tongue raw and salty and so insulting wanting more teach me again the story that holds your throat and lets you choke on words you heard ten hundred times as it turned to lies and gather may the bitterness make your story rage may you taste coffee and chocolate May you taste coffee and chocolate when you're talking shit.
Since we are mostly ocean, I was hoping that you'd be open to me. Since we are mostly ocean, salt and water, thin skin, holding on. I don't feel like holding on. Salt and water, thin skin, holding on. I know that we'll survive the storm. What are we but grains of sand in this endless sea? live in Studio 6. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, Before we go any further, can I have the two of you introduce yourselves? Sure. Do you want to go first, Ridley? Sure. I'm Ridley Bishop. I'm playing clarinet and bass clarinet today. Um, I'm Roxanne Nesbitt. I'm playing computer (laughs) and computer-generated keyboard. (laughs) Yeah, doing a little of singing too, I guess. Yeah, but, and singing. Um, thanks for coming to do this. Really excited to have you in the studio, um, bringing your your unique blend of sounds uh, to to Studio Six. Um, one of the things you mention in some of your press materials is investigating the space between sound and design, um, and I wonder, sort of through that lens, how your training as an architect influences the way you make music. Hmm. Good questions. Um, So I guess studying design um, allowed me to 
design instruments and which is something that I always really wanted to do but not something that I incorporate in this project that much sorry that's not an exciting <laughs> answer um but so uh, so I guess uh so far it's in this project in that I will make samples of instruments that I've made or things that I spaces that I think sound interesting but um I don't think design like has like radically changed the way that I make music I guess um for for this project then what sort of is there a primary focus that you that you work through when it comes to coming up with the songs or does it just sort of happen um this the lyrics for me come really easily and then there's kind of a process of um trying to make it into like more of a like stable song entity um there's also like a visual component usually i make um kind of like collage animated videos for each of the songs which we are not playing with today but you can find on the interwebs um and then, uh, so with the videos, I tried to kind of speak to something that I couldn't kind of name with words, um, because I feel like there's always like another, like kind of another idea. There, there's al always like multiple ideas in, in each phrase, in each kind of expression. And so I try to, with the videos, um, add, show kind of like what what the maybe hidden context was for something different layers of media allow you to provide different context yeah. or that kind of thing yeah cool um do you want to get into the next set of songs sure yeah so this is uh actually a new song that is not on the recording that we just released Mandarins. in in june um but it we played it at the release show and it's feeling it's feeling good still so <laughs> <laughs> oh and this song's called haunted
broken sweet promises can melt in any rain and i won't blame my dog that box but i still find that it's hard candy a sugar sweet promises can melt in any rain and i won't blame the sun that sets but it still gets under my skin and how are you to find your way there's no map no mother no paper trail how are you to find your way there's no map no mother no paper trail There's no map, no mother, no pay, but trace so we stray, yeah, yeah, we stray. live in Studio 6 here at CJSF. Uh, thanks again. That was haunting, beautiful, evocative, re- really great. Um, you you just put out a new record called Mandarins mm-hmm. uh, that came out on June 21st, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, s- one of the tracks you just played uh, was from that record, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Feel All Right, mm-hmm. the one in the middle. Um, I know that was a collaboration with Kimortal on the on the on the record Mm -hmm. uh how did that come together um i just met kim at a show and i was so blown away by what they do and just asked them to collaborate and they said yes so yeah it's pretty simple simple and then kim came over to my house one day and we made it had like soup or something and then they uh like uh 
recorded in like I feel like 10 minutes or something <laughs> single take yeah or like it was like a uh, just yeah just a couple takes and then uh, and then they just said like oh just take whatever you want <laughs> and then I had to go <laughs> uh-huh. yeah so which is yeah well I mean you seem in in the music that you're creating you're you're working with samples right mm-hmm. you're working with taking elements of pre-existing audio and mm-hmm. combining them into mm-hmm. something new. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that process, and you mentioned that you often start with vocals or with, mm-hmm. with words or melodies. How, how do you get to the point that you're like, adding and layering sounds? Like, At what point does that start to play into it? Like, How far into it the song are you usually? Um, I guess so I'll have like a fixed like like lyrics and vocal melody and then I'll um I'll either try to find samples that I can sing along with and then like modulate accordingly to kind of get them in the right key or or I'll kind of sit at the piano and try to find like a um find chords and find like like a kind of like tonal way of making sense of songs but uh, yeah, I kind of do do both, and there's both approaches on this record. And the instrumentation beyond the samples is pretty pretty varied, mm-hmm. um, and you know different than than what you've got live at times. How do you how do you make decisions around instrumentation? Like, how, do, are, do you just hear the instrument in your head and you you go with it, or is there a process? Um, so I guess for this record, I just found instrumentalists who, that I really respect, really being one of them. And then uh, I just asked them to do a session, and then so there would, I would bring to that session like a song that already had vocals and already had like a kind of like most of a track, and then have them add something. So uh, Ridley plays on the record, and also uh, Josh Zubot plays violin, and um, John Castelic plays viola. So I guess I tried to have like a melodic instrument on each um on each song and what was the most challenging thing about recording this record um i guess i had a lot of anxiety about how to put it into the world um because i I couldn't decide whether or not I would like embrace like streaming culture. Part of me just wanted to like make a vinyl record and like (laughs) only have people like buy it from my house or something (laughs) like, um, extreme DIY. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause it's, um, I mean, I'm sure you know that streaming is like a horrible, like terrible, bad deal for, uh, like independent musicians and musicians who like, who kind of work at like a more of a community scale. So I, yeah, I just was like, um, not sure how to share my music anymore and how to, um, yeah, I guess the, Uh, just the, the business side of things is like overwhelming, I think. mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the art itself comes out easy enough, but then it's deciding what to do with it. Yeah. It becomes the issue. And how, how, to, how to do with it. How to, um, how to share and how to um, share in a way that still makes me feel like respected and still help, helps me to respect the like, musicians that I work with. And yeah. Uh, you've played uh, a new song so far. Uh, mm-hmm. What's next for Graftition? Well, uh, Ridley and I were talking a little bit about this yesterday. Um, I was saying that I want to join Graftition with my project where I design instruments and have it just let it be a lot more crazy, I think, mm-hmm. and more... Um, mm, I'm also kind of moving away indefinitely. So I'm, uh, like going to flying to France on, in the middle of September. And then I just might not come back. I won't be in France. I'll be in Berlin and then in the Netherlands. But, um, yeah. Change. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be different. Yeah. 
cool. Well, uh, let's get into the, the last set of songs then. Uh, do you want to tell us anything about uh, the tracks you're going to play? Um, we're going to play a song called Powdered Sugar. Powdered Sugar. And, uh, and then we're going to finish with a song called Mandarins. Something interesting that just happened was that uh, when we played Feel All Right, my, like, one of my main samples was, like, missing from the oh, yeah. song. Yeah, it sounded <laughs> different, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was like, where'd it go? <laughs> Exclusive live version. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, remix. Uh-huh. <laughs> that kind of thing just happens sometimes. I know you taste another when you kiss my lips. I know you taste another when you grind my hair into flour to make communion bread. I take the body, drink the blood, just like the Father said. I know you taste another when you kiss my lips. I know you taste another when you grind my hands into powdered sugar to get sweet and sad. Lips like Chris 
Christmas mandarins I guess that love's a gift you give That it changes live at studio six ridley roxanne thank you very much for doing this uh and coming to play your songs for us uh the new record mandarins is places where music are sold uh on Bandcamp and other places i assume yeah it is streaming i i the you, you end caved. of the existential crisis was <laughs> that i had to do it great well uh thanks that's thank it you. thanks for having us yeah thank you so much for having us cool that's a wrap